Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isn't the Lord good tonight? Yes, he is. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Come on up, Gavin. You will join me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're just going to sing. Hallelujah. We're just going to have time. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm already having the time. So, uh, what we're about to say, you're going to know. And hopefully I don't mess it up. I do good when I don't rehearse or when I don't practice. But uh, uh, we're just going to sing to the Lord and we invite you to join with us as we do that. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. I want you to use that. Hallelujah. I want them to hear you, not just me. Hallelujah. But we're going to sing it again. I'm thankful for the blood of Of God moving. 
I have dreams of the Spirit of God moving, doing things. I dream about that. Amen. I have dreams of seeing people healed. Hallelujah. I dream these things. Why? Because I ask God for pleasant dreams. I want to see people set free. That makes me happy. Why? Because it makes God happy. Amen. So if it makes him happy, it makes me happy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We are in a series on the infallible proof God wants you healed. Infallible proof, meaning proof that cannot fail, that God wants you healed. This is week number nine of the infallible proof that God wants you healed. Amen. Amen. We have already talked about reasons number one through four. Reason number one that God wants you healed is God's word is medicine. Now, as medicine, it is medicine. Amen. And it is medicine to those that find it. And if you'll find the word of God, you'll be healed. Oh, I believe it. The word is medicine to those that find it. Reason number two is a strong spirit will sustain you in a day of trouble. Amen. A strong spirit's going to help you when you're battling sickness. When that, when that sickness tries to come on you, a strong spirit's going to get you through that and bring you out to the other side. Amen. In other words, you'll live and not die. Amen. Woo. I'm excited. I'm, I'm about to get shouting already. <laughs> Last week, we talked about reason number three was the original creation of God shows us that there was no sickness when God created man. None. No sickness whatsoever. And then when we left, we finished that, we went on to reason number four, and we talked about heaven and the world to come, or New Jerusalem, as Revelation 21 says, and there's no sickness there. There's no sickness in the garden when God created man, and there's no sickness in heaven or in the world to come, and the only thing that's missing is right here, right now. We've got to get it settled. There's not supposed to be sickness. It's not the plan of God. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. And again, I must make a statement. I am amazed at my God. Amen. Because what we've been ministering on on Sunday mornings is now tied back in the Sunday night. I didn't plan this. Only God does these things. Amen. Because we talk about reigning in Christ on Sunday mornings. And one of our theme scriptures comes from Romans chapter 5. Amen. Amen. So Romans 5, verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Now wait a minute, how did this happen? By one man. By one man, sin has entered into the world, and death by sin. So there was no sin in the original creation. There was no sin when God made Adam and put him in the garden. There was no sin. The Bible says Adam walked with God in the cool of the day. He walked with him. Now, I don't know about you, but to walk with God, is a high thing. Yes. To walk with. I'm talking about truly walk with God. I don't take those words lightly. For to truly walk with God means fellowship. Amen. Right. It means communion. It means we're becoming one. Yes. You can't walk together unless you're one. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Amen. 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 So Adam was one with God and he walked with God in the cool of the day. There was no sin. But according to Romans chapter 5, sin entered into the world by one man, Adam. For Adam sinned. And because Adam sinned, death entered the world. Amen. Death entered. So I'm going to ask you a question that I don't have to answer. I mean, don't have to ask. And that is, was there death in the original plan of God? You need to settle it. Because as of this moment... Unless the Lord comes, man's dying. Death is the last enemy. According to 1 Corinthians 15, death is the last enemy. 
So all are going to die. And, and people like to quote the scripture and say, well, it's appointed unto man once, it, once to die. And they take that scripture and says, there's an exact hour that you're going to die. That's a lie of the devil. There, well, I, let me rephrase. There is an exact hour you're going to die, but it's not necessarily an appointed hour. It's appointed that you will die, but what you do on this earth determines how long you live, live or die. The things that you're doing in your life determines whether you live or die. If I go out and I uh, do drugs all day, every day, week after week after week, guess what? I'm going to live a short life. Right. Amen. Was that the plan of God? No. Was that the appointed time of God? No. Because the Word tells us that God wants us to live a long life and prosper. Amen. That's the Word of God. But people take the Scripture and twist it and say, well, that was their appointed time. It's a lie of the devil. Lie of the devil. You need to get rid of some lies. That's right. Amen. I think uh, uh, last Sunday morning, I talked about some things that we believe that are hindering us in our walk. That was Sunday morning. There's some things that have been handed down from generation to generation that mama said and, and daddy said and granddaddy said and, and great granddaddy said. And just because they said it doesn't make it the gospel. Right. I don't mean to step on toes, but the truth is the truth. Amen. So, in the original creation, there was no death. It was not in the plan of God for death to be there. But all of our lives, we've been surrounded by sickness and death. Every one of us. You can, we, we talked about it earlier. Amen. We've been surrounded by sickness and death. You, you don't have to look very far to find somebody sick. There are some churches that are full of sickness. You don't have to be a big church to be full of sickness. You can be a small congregation and have a lot of sickness. Amen. I'm talking about, now, I'm not talking about spiritual sickness right now. I'm talking about physical. Physical sickness. There's a, a, a lot of people that experience sickness. And again, if, if, we, uh, if the Lord tarries, we see death. Amen. So we don't have to look very far. Our whole life has been filled with or surrounded by sickness and death, hatred and murder, fear and anxiety, poverty and lack, and even death. Our whole life. Our whole life. We've seen it everywhere we turn. And so because we've seen it every Everywhere we turn, uh, it doesn't matter if it's in the church house or on the street. It doesn't matter if it's in your family or on the job. We've seen and experienced sickness and death. It has become the norm. Here? It has become the norm. In other words, we think it is the way it's supposed to be. Because we've seen it. Because we, some of us have experienced it. Some people are sick in their body even right now. And they've been sick all their life. Amen. Well, no, no I don't, I'm going to take that back. Not amen. Amen means so be it. Got to watch what we say. Amen. But some people have been sick all their lives with hereditary sicknesses that have been passed down from generation to generation to generation. And because they've seen it all their life, they think it's the will of God. It is not the will of God for you to be sick in body. That's right. It has never been the will of God for you to be sick. Now, please, if you're sick in body, feel no condemnation. Please hear me. I want you to hear the heart of God. The heart of God is there was no sickness in the garden. That's right. There was no death, no sickness, no pain. And in heaven, there is no sickness. That's right. And the church today agrees there's no sickness in heaven. But we have a hard time agreeing with about it here on the earth. Yeah. We have a hard time. Well, when God gets ready, he'll heal you. Well, God's been ready since he created you. Amen. When he created man, he created him perfect. Perfect. We talked about it last week. And I guess I'll have to say it because some of you wasn't here and hadn't heard the, the message. But when he got done creating everything, he said, it's very good. Very good. And 
other words, he was highly pleased with what he created. There was no sickness, no disease, no murder, no hatred, no poverty, no lack, no death. None of these things existed in the garden. God was highly pleased with what he created. So when he looks at us today, I got to believe if we're dealing with sickness, he's not highly pleased. Now hear me, he still loves us. But we talked about this morning the fact that all of creation, Romans 8, 21, 21, 22, whichever one it was, we talked about that all the whole creation is groaning and travailing looking and longing for the manifestation of the sons of God. Do you know the church is groaning? The church itself is groaning because they're looking for God to manifest himself in healing. In healing. Why? Because that's a manifestation. When Jesus walked on the planet physically, everywhere he went, people got healed. Everywhere. So, if everywhere he went, people got healed, then what is the plan of God today? That everywhere we go, people get healed. Hear me now. I didn't say everywhere the ministry go. I said everywhere we go. Each and every one of us are supposed to be carrying healing to a lost and dying world. Jesus didn't come up and ask people, do you deserve to be healed? Show me one person he asked if they deserve to be healed. There's not one incident in the Bible. He never asked if you deserve to be healed. Amen. Why? Because he already knew you didn't deserve to be healed. I don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. If it wasn't for the blood that we were singing about, I would deserve nothing but hellfire and damnation. That's why we sing about the blood. Thankful for the blood. Amen. So, sin and death was not in the garden. It was not a part of his original creation. But because of sin, death entered into the world. Romans 6.23. Most of you can quote it. Anybody want to try? Romans 6.23. I see wheels turning. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Did you know it actually pays to sin? It pays to sin. This is what it says. The wages of sin is death and you're going to get paid one day. If you sin and, and you walk and live in sin, there is a payment yes. or a penalty, if you want to call it that, that you will reap one day. It's a wage, and it's called death. You can die early. You can die before your time because of sin. Now hear me. You can be a Bible-thumping preacher and die before your time because of sin. It's in your life that you're hiding from everybody. We talked about that this morning. You can't hide it. He sees it. Amen. So you need to get under the blood. Amen. So sin has a payment. And, and you need to understand that the finished payment for sin is death. But it wasn't the plan of God. The plan of God is life. And that more abundantly. Amen. That's the plan of God. God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to have life. He wants you to live and experience the blessings of God. He wants you to walk in health here and now. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we're here tonight. If we are learning and we are establishing, and prayerfully before we're done with this study, you will have such a surety that no one can ever take it out of you that the will of God is that you be healed. No matter what, the will of God is that you be healed and walk in health. Amen. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Yes, it's a gift. It's free. He wants you to have it. He wants you to experience it. Hear me. In the age that we live in, called sloppy of God. 
Some of you look like you never heard that before. <laughs> That's the age we're living in. It's called sloppy agape, which means agape means love. Means that people live as though they can do anything they want, and God has to forgive them because they said forgive. But do you know that you can only play this game so long? God knows the heart. And just because you say forgive me doesn't mean you're forgiven. The average person will cry out, Lord, forgive me, because they got caught. When you get caught, you tend to, you tend to ask for forgiveness. But what is in the heart? You see, it all comes back to you being alone with Jesus. Amen. And this age of sloppy agape is going to send some people to hell. Yeah. Because they're living a life full of sin, which has a repercussion called death. And on the other side of death is hell. You're only going one of two places, heaven or hell. But hell was not the plan of God. Never was. Heaven's the plan of God. Heaven, he wants you with him. The whole plan of God, why he put man here, was to fellowship with him. That's right. To walk with him, just like Adam did in the cool of the day. Walk with him, know him, and fellowship with him. Experience his love and his mercy and his long-suffering. And just experience all of his goodness. That's the plan of God. But man, because of sin, is missing the will of God. And sickness is on the face of the earth. Turn to 2 Corinthians 7. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Glory to God. Glory to God. Everybody enjoying this so far? Amen. You staying with me? Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. You see, there's a whole lot of people that are sorry today. There's a whole lot of them. I, I, we could spend some time and talk about some politicians that have been caught doing some things they shouldn't have done, using power to do things they shouldn't have done, uh, immoral acts and, 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 and stealing and just all kinds of things. And when they get caught, they're sorry. But it's not godly sorrow. They're just sorry they got caught. But godly sorrow works repentance. Godly sorrow is not just sadness because you're caught. Godly sorrow is, I recognize that I've sinned against my God. I recognize that I've done something that has displeased God Almighty. That's godly sorrow. But notice, true godly sorrow works repentance. In other words, if you're really sorry, there's going to be a change. Because repentance means to turn or to change from the way or the direction you may go. So in other words, if you're going left, you turn and go right. We're talking about God and Saul right now. Now hear me, sloppy agape is not going to get you there. There are churches today that are full of people who are lifting up their hands and they're uh, singing songs and they're saying amen and all these things. But they haven't experienced godly sorrow. They've experienced sloppy of God. They've experienced man-made justification. Man-made justification. In other words, justification through a religious system that tells them they're okay with God. There is no man that can tell you you're okay with God. I don't have that power. You can't come to me and, and, and tell me your sins and me forgive you of your sins and you be okay with God. That's right. I'm sorry. I don't care how much you try to pay me. I don't have that ability. Only God 
can justify. Only God can cleanse. And only God can forgive. I'm talking about true forgiveness. Truly washing us with the blood of the Lamb and making our hearts right. Many people today want the blessing, but they don't want to repent. Many people today want God to give me, give me, give me. They want to be healed. They want to be blessed. They want God to bless them on the job and bless them in the family and bless them in this and bless them in that, but they don't want to change. Until we change, we won't experience it. You can't get the blessing without change. God loves you even though you were in sin. Here, sin didn't come from him, and he knows it. He loves you even though you're in sin, but he cannot bless you. I'm talking about really bless you. Until you get your heart right. For the wages of sin has a byproduct. It's called death. Adam sinned, and because of that, sickness entered into the world. So reason number five why God wants you healed is because we know God wants us healed because of the origin of sin. The origin of sin brought sickness. The origin of sin brought sickness. By one man, sin entered into the world, and the same fix for sin is the same fix for sickness. I'm going to say it one more time. The same fix for your sin is the same fix for sickness. The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. you got to repent. Yes. Jesus is the only answer for your sickness. That was reason number five. Are you ready for number six? Yes. We're moving right along, aren't we? Yes. Turn to Job chapter 2. Hallelujah. Again, I am so amazed at how God has tied all this together. I did not plan this. Only God did. We were in Job a couple weeks ago, Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Talking about the courts of heaven. Job chapter 2. And I'm not going to take time to read all of chapter, the beginning verses here. But understand that the devil has come before God in heaven. And he's uh, come before him, and when he got there, God said, Have you considered my servant Job? He's a perfect and an upright man. None like him in all the earth. And, and the church people today want to take those scriptures and say, Well, see there, God brought up Job. God was telling Satan, Hey, you need to look at Job. That's not what he was saying. Job was on trial. Because Job was on trial, it was his turn or his case that had to be presented. So God announced the case. Have you considered Job? Job chapter 2, verse 7. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord, out of the court, and he smote Job with boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. In other words, from the top of your head all the way to the bottom of your feet. And he took him a pot shirt to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Did God smoke Job with boils? You need to hear yourself say it. I'm going to ask it again. You need to say it louder. Did God smite Job with boils? Yes, no. Who did? Satan. The Bible tells us Satan smote Job with boils. Now hear me. He couldn't do it. Until he got permission. That's right. That's right. He could not do it till he got permission, meaning he had to win his case in the court of heaven. People say, well, why is God letting this happen to me? Why am I going through this problem? Why am I going through that problem? Why, 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 why? We've all asked it. Every one of us have asked it. And the answer is, you lost in the court of heaven. I'm just going to tell you, point blank. You lost in the court of heaven because the devil cannot do anything to you 
that he doesn't first get permission. And God's desire is to bless you. Get it established. God is not going to put sickness on you. Satan is. It's not the will of God for you to experience sickness. It never was the will of God. We just talked about it. Sickness came because of sin in the garden. Amen. Yeah. Now hear me. Job did not have the book of Job. Job didn't have this Bible that you got. He couldn't read about Satan coming before God and and uh, saying, well, you know, have you considered my servant Job? And Job saying, well, you got a hedge about him. I mean, uh, Satan saying, you got a hedge about Job. I can't touch him because you won't let me. Hear me. Satan realized he could not touch Job because of the hedge of protection about him. There's protection in the blood. So he, Job didn't have this Bible. That you and I have the luxury of reading the Bible and getting strength out of it and getting understanding of how the devil works and how he's trying to attack you. I'm going to suggest to everyone who can to be here next Sunday morning. Because I already know what I'm ministering. And you're going to want to hear it. I'm just telling you ahead of time. Because there's some things that are going on in your life that you may not be able to put your finger on. But we're going to talk about it next week. Amen? Yeah. We're going to give you some reasons why you're going through some of the things you're going through. Job didn't have the scriptures, but Job knew one thing. He loved God, and one day he was blessed, and the next day everything was gone. Job was a wealthy man. Job was very wealthy. God had blessed him greatly, and the devil came and he said, well, he's only blessing you. Know, he's only serving you because you're blessing. So God said, well, he's in your hand. Do with him as you please. Just don't take his life. Can't take his life. Hear me? Say you still can't take your life. You need to settle this. The devil's not going to take you out. Looks like you ain't never heard that before. The devil is not going to take you out. If you go, it's because you choose to go. If you go, it's because you give up. Sure it's thick in here now. <laughs> but it's the truth. The devil cannot kill you. Now you can put yourself in the wrong place and die before your time. But you did it. You did it. God didn't do it. And the devil worked through it. That's why it's important to listen to the Spirit. To be sensitive to the leading of the Lord. To make sure that you're not going someplace you're not supposed to go. You know, there's been times that uh, we've been traveling. And uh, I got a little upset. Yeah, I know nobody in here does that. But um, we, we, would, we would be uh, traveling and the weather get bad or something like that. I, I remember one time it took us six hours to get to Memphis. And right before we got there, we did a donut and ended up in the ditch. And kept going and kept right on out. Thank you, Jesus. But uh, I, I remember many times I'd be frustrated. Because something would happen and, and we would have to slow down or we would, we would be running a little bit behind schedule. I like being on time. I like being on time. I, matter of fact, I like being hurt. And uh, I'd get a little bit frustrated and it wouldn't be just a few miles down the road that had been a massive wreck that we would have been right in the middle of. And the Spirit of the Lord just... Says I protect you. I'm talking sometimes it's just a couple of minutes. Amen. And even though I got frustrated, he was still protecting me. Amen. 
So you got to be sensitive to the Lord so that you don't put yourself in a predicament that you're not supposed to be in. Amen. You know, you can put yourself, in, and I'm getting a little sidetracked, but you can put yourself in a predicament trying to witness to somebody. Trying to do good, trying to help somebody and put yourself in a spot you should not be. People have got hurt that way. You better know that you know that you know that you're hearing the voice of God. Amen. So Job was blessed one day, on the next, everything was gone. But he continued to serve the Lord. Amen. And the end of the story is he ended up with twice as much as he had to begin with. Amen. Why? Because he's remained faithful. Amen. Turn to Luke chapter 13. Glory to God. So who made Job sick with boils? The devil did. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody okay? Luke chapter 13. We're almost done tonight. We moved right along. Luke chapter 13, verse 11. And behold, I love the word behold. It means look at this, pay attention to it. There was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and he said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Hallelujah. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. He got mad. Because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. How dare he? And he said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. Um, Who bound this woman? Satan. Wait a minute now. We just looked at Job, and the Bible said that Satan came and, and put balls on Job. Now we see a woman in the New Testament. You know, some people throw it out because it was in the Old Testament. But now we see a woman in the New Testament that Jesus said, Satan hath bound this woman for 18 years. Bound her how? With a spirit of infirmity. Now, you may have never experienced this, but she would bow over and she couldn't straighten up. No matter how hard she tried, no matter who she went and saw, they could not fix her. She was bound by Satan. By Satan. Look at Acts chapter 10. We are almost at it. Acts chapter 10. I almost said this is one of my favorite scriptures, but there's so many. Yeah. <laughs> to me, this is an evangelist scripture. I love preaching this scripture. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. What did he do? Good. He did good. He, went, he did what? He did, he did good. And healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Did he heal some of them? Did he heal the ones he thought about or thought, thought that uh, it would be okay to heal? No, he healed all that were oppressed. So sickness, according to this scripture, is an oppression. An oppression. There are many people who have been oppressed by the devil through sickness. Now I've got to ask you, was blindness an oppression? What about dumbness? What about lameness? What about cancer? 
You know, there's a scripture that, that talks about cancer in the Bible. The woman with the issue of blood was experiencing cancer. Wow. Cancer is what caused her bleeding. Wow. That's cancer. Amen. My grandmother had it. Bleeding in the female part because of cancer. Couldn't stop bleeding. Doctors couldn't do anything. Caused by cancer. Is cancer an oppression? What about diabetes? Yeah. What about tuberculosis? Yeah. What about AIDS? Yes. Is sickness and oppression? Yes. Then according to the word of God, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So in Job, the Bible says that Satan put boils on, on Job. In Luke, we read where the woman with the infirmity uh, uh, bowed over a spirit of infirmity for 18 years that Satan had bound her. Sickness. And now we just read where Jesus went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil. In other words, they were uh, sick because of the devil. So I think we have enough scripture to make it a sure thing in our hearts and in our minds that sickness is of the devil. Reason number six that we know that God wants you healed is because sickness is of the devil, not God. Amen. Hear me now. Sickness is of the devil. There are people today who would say that it's the will of God for some people to be sick. Hear me now. We just talked about the origin of sickness was sin. Reason number five. There are people today that will tell you, well, God's trying to work something through this and, and, and he, he's trying to teach me something. Well, then they would have to say if it's the will of God for them to be sick, that it's also the will of God for them to walk in sin. And we know better. Wow. wow. Should have been a lot of amens there. We know it's not the will of God to walk in sin. Jesus came to deliver us from sin and sickness. The very word salvation means deliverance. Mm -hmm. Deliverance. Not just to deliver you from sin, but to deliver you from everything that's binding you. Hallelujah. Everything. So if you're dealing with sickness, it's the will of God to set you free. Hallelujah. It's his plan, his purpose for you to be set free, to be healed. Thank you, Lord. It's his plan. So, I'm going to ask you to say something with me. Just repeat it after me, but only if you believe it. Only if you believe it. Sickness is not the will of God for me. Sickness is not the will of God for me. Let's say it again. Sickness is not the will of God for me. Disease will never be God's will for me. Disease will never be God's will for me. Disease. It's not the will of God for you. But you got to get it established. You need to know that you know that you know that sickness and disease is not God's will for you. Yes. Never has been, never will be. Yes. Healing is the will of God. Yes. So say this. Healing is the will of God for me. Yes. Say it again. Healing is the will of God for me. One more time. Healing is the will of God for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Healing is the will of God. Healing is the will of God. Healing is the will of God. We know that we know that we know that God's will is for us to be healed. We know it. And the more you know it, the less the devil can bring it on you. Hear me? We are going to get this so settled that there will never be a doubt in your mind. Because the more you settle it, you can answer those thoughts when they come. Yeah. You know, the devil used to play on my mind, and he used to tell me, well, you're just overdoing it all the time. And he, I, would, I would buy into that line, and I do overdo it. I'm a goer. I'm, I'm busy, 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 busy. But you know what? I've learned last two Sunday nights ago, 
that if I rest in God, I can get everything done I need to get done. Everything. Everything. I'm not talking about sleeping right now. We need our sleep. Don't get me wrong. But sleep is not always the answer. It's learning to rest in Him that is the answer. And when we rest in Him, we can walk in heaven. And I'm talking about be busy. Amen. So the devil wants to lie to you, and he wants to tell you, well, you're just doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this, and, 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 and you need to stop all that. But if it's the devil telling you, it's a lie. So every time that something tries to come on me, the devil's bound to tell me something. Hear me? Every time a sickness has tried to come on me, there was first a thought that came in my ear. Yeah. He said, oh, you're overdoing it. If you keep going down that road, you're going to get sick. You're going to get sick. And if you believe the lie, you get sick. Right. Hear me? If you believe the lie, you get sick. What do I have to do when that lie comes? i got to quote the word. I begin to speak over my body and say, devil, you're a liar. I am the healed of the Lord. Yeah. I've been healed by the stripes of Jesus. And no matter what's trying to come on me, I find it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it and I command it to leave my body right now. I speak to all disease, all infection, all bacteria, and I command it to go in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just start thanking you for healing. Yes. Thanking you for healing. You can get healed and not even know it. Amen. Because you caught up in thinking. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you the truth. I've had the signs of sinus infections come on me. And I just start binding it, rebuking it, and then just forget about it and just go praise God. And the next thing I know, it's already done. Amen. Didn't even know where it went. Why? Because it was a lie of the devil. Yes. A lie. You do not have to be sick. But you got to know it. You gotta settle it in your mind. You gotta settle it in your spirit. You gotta get this settled once and for all. And the only way to do that is know the word. You gotta know the word. And that's why I'm giving you scripture after scripture after scripture and reason after reason after reason why God wants you healed. We are on reason number six. We got 20 something to go. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting this settled in me. I know that I know that I know that I know that it's the will of God for me to walk in hell. That's right. It's the will of God. Stand with me. Thank you. Hallelujah. I've got the word of God in me. I've got the word of God in me. I've got his life, his nature, and his ability. I've got the word of God. The word of God in me. I've got the word of God in me. I've got his life, his nature, and his ability. I've got the word of God in me. I've got the word of God in me. I've got the word of God in me. Hallelujah. I had to write the words 
that's all we can. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is there anybody here tonight that needs prayer for anything? We want to pray for you, and we want to make sure that you don't leave here uh, with any sickness, any disease, any infections, uh, any bondage of any kind. If you need healing or, or help from God, we want to minister to you tonight. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. You've got to step out. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. Glory to God. Come on up. Come on up. Anybody, anybody who needs prayer. It doesn't matter what you need prayer for. If you need prayer, you need prayer. Yes. Amen. And you say, well, Brother Dan, I've been up there so many times. It doesn't matter. No, no, I'm saying everybody. And I don't care how many times you've been at this, this uh, prayer altar. It doesn't matter. You come until you get what you need. Amen. 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 I mean it. I, I'm very serious about this. You need to be here every chance you get in this altar until you get what you need. That's right. Amen. You say, well, then I, I'm tired of it. Well, then just tell Jesus. Amen. Amen. Tell Jesus. Because he's the one that's going to heal you. Amen. Amen. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to lay hands on you as the Bible says. The Bible says you can lay hands on the sick and they what? Shall recover. Amen. So, when we pray for you tonight, how many are here for healing? Raise your hand. Healing in your body. Okay. Three out of four. That's fine. All right. So, when we lay hands on you tonight, what's going to happen? Heal. You're going to be healed. Yes, hallelujah. It's not a question. It's not according to Brother Nan. You've got to hear me now. You're not being healed by me. Only Jesus can heal you. I can lay hands on you, and obedience to the Word of God and the anointing of God can flow through me and bring healing into you, but you are the receptacle to receive it. Only you can receive it. I wish I could receive it for you, but I can't. If it was up to me, I'd receive healing for everybody. I would. I'd just be going around. Well, I got it for you. I got it for you. I got it for you. I'd be giving it out like gifts. I really would. But you are the receiver. And just like when you got born again, you asked Jesus to come into your heart, and boom, he did it. I mean, it was immediate. You didn't have to sit there and beg. You didn't bleed. You didn't cry out and cry out and cry out. Well, some people did. But you didn't have to. Amen. All you had to do was ask him. And when you asked him, he did it. The same is true with him. It's the same thing. By faith, I receive. By faith, I receive. Uh, give me a few prayer orders to come up here behind these. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we're about to pray. And as we pray, what's going to happen? Healing. 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 You're going to be healed. Hallelujah. Now, here's, here's, the, here's one of the things I've got to say real quick. And uh, uh, I, I don't know how else to say it, but just to say it. If I give you a gift, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to receive it. You take it, and what else? Receive it. And you say, thank you. Thank you. Amen. When you give a gift, you're supposed to be thankful. Right. Amen. So Jesus gave you a gift. He gave you a gift of healing. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you. So we're going to lay hands on you in Thank obedience. You. And because the word says lay hands on the sick and they shall so recover. Yes. It's not a question. You're going to recover tonight. Yes. It's going to be done right here, right now. So all you have to do is receive it. Say, Jesus, I thank you that I receive my healing right now. In Jesus' name. Did you know that's the greatest part you play? Yes. You're receiving. You just receive. Now, a lot of people have a problem receiving. They like to give. I'm like that. I like to give. I really do. I like to give. And so when somebody tries to give me something, a lot of times I'm like, oh, no, you don't need to do that. Some of us are doing that to Jesus. He's trying to give you a gift. All you got to do is take it and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So right now, we're going to lay hands on you, and all you got to do is say, thank you, Jesus, mm -hmm. and just receive your gift. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You ready? Hallelujah. 